Echo Station 3TA. Hasbro spoils its own surprise, good and bad news for Star Wars gamers, and nothing but good news for both original trilogy Darth Vaders. It's February 4th, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your one-stop source for new and noteworthy developments in the world of Star Wars. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now this week's lead story. The long wished for and recently rumored AT-AT resculpt is a reality. This from Hasbro themselves. According to a press release that is available on businesswire.com, the monstrous playset slash vehicle will be available late this summer, August 1st, according to the release, with a retail value of just under $100. The brief press release blurb outlines a number of improved and altogether new play features not present on the original AT-AT toy made back in the early 80s. The beast stands at two foot tall and listed at a foot wide, we can only assume that's with doors open, and they appear to open on both sides now. Both of those doors will be useful when you're accessing the up to 20 figures the product holds including six of them apparently in the cockpit. The expected electronics and sound effects are included, as well as an AT-AT driver figure and a speeder bike. As stated, photos will probably be available at the Toy Fair in New York, which is going to be held on February 14th through the 17th. Stay tuned for more details. Hasbro's willingness to produce such a large vehicle, given earlier reluctance to do so, is probably a bit more understandable given this next story, the first in our collecting segment this week. Me? I'm a collecting fool. Lucasfilm announced this week that Star Wars is the most profitable and valuable franchise in the toy market today. Star Wars toys outsold their nearest licensed competitor by nearly 40% in 2009, led no doubt by the popularity of the Clone Wars television show. According to the press release, which is also available on BusinessWire.com, Star Wars toys last year generated $408 million in sales. Hasbro and Lucasfilm will no doubt try to top that number this year, and at the Toy Fair in London last month, they premiered a few items that they're going to try to lure you into the stores with later in 2010. These included a re-sculpted snow speeder, good compliment to the AT-AT I suspect, as well as a re-sculpted twin pod cloud car, one of the toys from the original line that up to this point has never been re-released since the 1995 relaunch of the Star Wars toy license. A kid-oriented General Grievous roleplay lightsaber was also debuted at the event, and all three can be seen loose and packaged on the StarWars.com website in the Collecting Vault section. No doubt these toys and others will be seen at the aforementioned New York Toy Fair. Toys that are available to purchase now include apparently the next two waves of Clone Wars figures, which are being spotted at targets across the country. It has been some time since new Clone Wars figures appeared at retail, and these waves include long-expected figures such as Ayla Secura, Hondo Ananka, and Darth Sidious. Expect them to show up at a retailer near you soon. Details are available on most popular collecting websites. One thing you cannot expect to show up at most retailers near you soon is the final wave of the Build-A-Droid Star Wars Legacy action figures. This very collector-friendly wave, which includes a number of expanded universe figures such as the Shock T from The Force Unleashed and the Solo Twins, will not be available at general retail as expected, but instead is being shifted to Toys R Us as an exclusive for that retailer. This information, which came from a Hasbro Q&A that is available on SirSteve'sGuide.com, 
is something of a surprise, and means that the currently shipping and hard-to-find Empire Strikes Back wave will be the last wave of Legends to be available generally at all retailers. No word yet from Hasbro or Toys R Us as to whether this exclusive wave is going to be available at normal price or if it will be some sort of premium product. Collecting news continues this week with an announcement from EFX Collectibles, makers of high-end prop replicas such as lightsabers and helmets. The long-previewed and teased Ralph McQuarrie Darth Vader concept helmet it will be available for order on Monday, February 8th at 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Limited to only 250 copies, this helmet looks pretty good and will probably sell out pretty quick. If you're interested, I recommend you check out Entertainment Earth currently, where they're taking pre-orders. Feel free to use the show link and help us out here at This Week in Star Wars. Load up the kids and check your taste buds at the door. Star Wars Happy Meals are coming back to McDonald's. According to StarWars.com, beginning on February 26th, McDonald's will be making available eight Star Wars toys in their Happy Meal collection. The meals will also include games to allow the kids to defend McWorld from Darth Vader, as well as something called Augmented Reality with McDeeVision. Ticket prices are going up. It just isn't fair. StarWarsCelebration.com indicates that individual ticket prices have gone up to $48 a day, with the exception being a Saturday pass, which is $54 per day. These prices are, generally speaking, $3 more than the prior $45 price, and $4 more for the Saturday pass. Children's passes have also gone up, although only by a couple bucks, and the four-day event pass has gone from $120 to $128. No word yet on why the price has increased or further price increases can be expected. All other celebration information remains the same. Star Wars Celebration 5 is going to be held in Orlando, Florida from August 12th through 15th, 2010. Some mixed news on the gaming front this week. Wizards of the Coast, the division of Hasbro that makes the Star Wars role-playing game, and the Star Wars Miniatures game since 2004, announced this week on their forums that they will not be renewing their Star Wars license. This week saw the release of the Dark Times Mini series, as well as the Galaxy of Intrigue role-playing game guidebook. However, there will only be one more release in each of these lines, the Masters of the Forest minis set in April, as well as at the same time, the Unknown Regions role-playing game guide. The Wizards' announcement cited only the economic downturn as the reasoning for this decision, and there's no word at this time as to whether some other licensee will pick up these products. On the world of computers and consoles, Sony Entertainment wants you to come back to Star Wars Galaxies if you're one of those players who has left. Anyone who returns to the game between February 1st, 2010 and March 1st will be able to log in and have their account reactivated for free. This promotion corresponds with the release of the Galactic Civil War Forces Under Siege expansion for the game. This is not the only online Star Wars gaming news this week, as rumors began to circulate and can be seen at Battlefront3.net that the next incarnation of the Battlefront series will in fact be an online game for home consoles such as the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Obviously, no details are available about these rumors yet, but we will follow them. Good news for both the voice and body of the original trilogy Darth Vader this week. Forbes conducted a poll to determine the most trustworthy celebrity in the U.S. Measuring for characteristics such as likability, reliability, and credibility... The survey found that none other than James Earl Jones, the voice of Darth Vader from Star Wars Episodes 3, 4, 5, and 6, is the most trustworthy celebrity in the United States. Oddly enough, Jones, who beat off such stars as Tom Hanks and Michael J. Fox to take the title, 
is not, to my knowledge, currently endorsing any products. Aside, of course, from the This Is CNN voiceover we've been hearing for years and years. And as reassuring as that news might be for James Earl Jones, even better news for the body of Darth Vader from the original trilogy. BBC.co.uk reports that 74-year-old actor David Prowse, who was the man in the suit for the original films, has been diagnosed as in remission from prostate cancer. Not much more to say about that, except, of course, that we're all very happy for him and look forward to seeing him soon back on the convention circuit. And our last bit of news this week isn't news at all, just an observation from TMZ.com of all places. The Celebrity Gossip and Entertainment News website made a shocking discovery this week that must be seen to be believed. To find out which troubled 80s child star has a shocking resemblance to a diminutive Jedi Master, go to TMZ.com and search Yoda. Well, as discussed here a couple weeks ago, Avatar is now the top grossing film of all time. Now we all know that the top grossing film today isn't exactly the same as the top grossing film of old days because ticket prices continue to explode. When we adjust for inflation, Star Wars is still safely in second place behind Gone with the Wind and probably will be for quite some time. Nonetheless, Avatar Fever has gotten everyone talking again about 3D and making old films into 3D versions. As we've talked about here, there are reports of the Star Wars films being put into 3D. Now, these are not new reports. They've been around for years. However, with the Avatar effect, journalists and media outlets, unaware of the long-standing plans to make these alterations, Simply are casting Lucas as jumping on a 3D bandwagon to make some more cash. Now we all know that Lucas loves to tinker with the films and certainly is willing to make some cash, but let's remember which came first. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit us at www twisw.com for links to the stories discussed on today's show, information on how you can contact us, as well as the internet's largest collection of sexually explicit Matlock fan fiction. This week in Star Wars, we prowl the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All other trademarks are property of their respective trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com.